We're going to talk a little bit now about polymorphism. It is initially a difficult concept to understand, but once you see how powerful it is and get used to it, it's one of the most powerful features that Java has. To help you understand polymorphism, I'm going to create a, sorry, a brand new project mm -hmm. in BlueJay. We're going to call it the Polymorphism Project. And I'm going to create two classes in here to demonstrate polymorphism. I'm going to create a person class, and I'm going to create a child class. So what I'm going to do in the person class, our classes are not going to have any attributes at all. They're just going to have some methods. We want to keep this demonstration simple. And the methods will all have the same format. They'll be public void methods. And the first one will be called eat. The next one will be called sleep. And the next one will be called play. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to do something very similar in the child class. So let me just copy these three methods because I'm going to reuse them. And now in the child class, I'm going to extend the person. So we say a child is a person. And here what I'm going to do is I'm going to paste those three methods in. And even though it's not really required, I'm going to put in this optional override. And let me, as a final step, hit the compile button. Also, I need to create some test code. OK, we're going to create a tiny bit of test code also. So we'll call this the person tester. And here we'll put the main method to create a person, create a child, and have them go through their calisthenics here. OK, so we have we have our basic person class here. And the person knows how to do three things. We have the child. The child knows how to do similar three things. But I rewrite this part here so that it's specific to the children. OK, so here we have a child class that is similar, uh, except that it's got these uh, slightly different sentences for each thing. And over here, we have the test code where we're going to create one of each, and we're going to call the play method. So let's run this now. And you can see here is the person playing, and here is the child playing. So first thing I'm going to do is we're going to just briefly review inheritance properties, and then I'll show you the magic of the polymorphism. So first of all, let's go over here, and let's turn off this play method. And my next question to you and your partner is, does this child still have a play method, even though I've turned this one off? Mr. Sneed, can the child still play if I call a play method on the child? It can. Where would it get the method from, sir? It would inherit it from the person class. So now you can see that when I run the test code, it's going to say person is playing for both of them because this is the person playing. When the child played, it just called the one that it inherited. OK, now let's go over here and put this back on. And things are going to start to get a little bit more complicated now. Because what I'm going to do is I'm going to, oh, sorry, inside the play method, I'm going to call the eat method like that. and. Um, Inside the person's uh, play method, I'm going to call eat method over here. So now the person has an eat method, a sleep, and a play. The play calls the eat method. You see that, right? And then here in the child class, they have the three. And likewise, the play method for the child, it calls the eat method. So now my question to you is when I run this code, and I call the play method for the person and the child. What's going to get printed? What's going to get printed when the person plays? And what's going to get printed when the child plays? Miss Ariam, when the person has its play method called, do you agree that this will be the first thing that gets printed? Then when the eat method gets called, which eat method do you think it's going to call? The person's each method. So it's going to print person is playing, and then person is eating. Now, when I call the child's play method, I think we can all agree that this one's going to get called. When it calls the eat method, which eat method is going to get called here, Miss Ariam? The child's eat method. So that makes sense, right? Let's run it. So you can see here's the person playing, and here's the child playing. 
now is where things start to get a little bit more interesting because what we're going to do is I'm going to get rid of this play method. So now the child no longer has a play method. The only play method that exists, well, it doesn't have this play method. Does the child still have a play method? It does. It has the one that it inherited from person class. Remember that one, right? So it still has this one. But you notice that inside the play method in the person class, it calls the eat method. And so now I have the $64,000 question for you. I think we can agree that when the person calls the play method, it will call, it will print this, it will call the eat method for person and it will print it. Now, when the child calls the play method, we all agree it has to call this method because there is no other play method anymore. But then inside this play method, it's calling the eat method. And now I would like you to have a discussion with your partner. Which eat method's going to get called? Is it going to call the person's eat method? Or is it going to call the child's eat method? OK. Now, this is an intriguing question. And every year, I like to take a little vote before we get on to the experiment. And your choices are, number one, it's going to call the person's eat method. And number two, it's going to call the child's eat method. How many people think it's going to call the child's eat method? Let's see what happens. It called the child's eat method. Now, this should be bothering you at some point because this code, look, this code, this person, this play code in the person class is calling the eat method on the child class. The person class doesn't even know about the child class. The child class code was written months later, possibly. How is it possible that the eat, eat method call here is calling the child's eat method instead of the person's eat method? That's the question. Let me explain to you what's really going on here. There's a two-step process. There's something that happens at compile time and then something else that happens at runtime. At compile time, the compiler comes along and says, OK, you're calling the play method here. You're calling the play method here. And does the child have a play method? Well, it inherits one. So yes, technically it has one. And then uh, it's calling the eat method. Is there an eat method that we're aware of? It knows about this eat method, the compiler does. And it says, OK, that's good enough. Let's go. Then when you actually run the program, when it's time to call the eat method, the Java virtual machine comes along and says, oh, probably want to call this eat method. Wait a minute, though. Is there a specialized eat method that I can call instead? And it says, Oh, I'm a child, and I have my own eat method, so let me call that eat method in its place. OK, now one more level of complication, and we call it quits here. Now we have a generic pointer, C, which is of type person. OK, so C points to person types, OK? and But it's got a child on the right-hand side. Well, this one is easy. It's going to be person playing and person eating. Here it's going to be child. So it's going to be person playing, but who's going to be doing the eating, the person or the child? Same thing happens. Same thing happens. So you can see that it doesn't matter if the pointer is pointing to a person or a child. Every single time a method needs to be called, the Java virtual machine says, what am I? And do I have one of those methods? That's all you have to remember. Something different happens at compile time. The compiler just makes a basic check to make sure that there's a method somewhere of that name that can be called. But the magic actually happens at runtime. And it's running, the program is running. The Java virtual machine comes along and says, oh, you want me to play? Let's see. I'm going to go to the, uh, the child class. Does the child class have a play method? No. OK, let me see if I inherited one from the person. Yes, I inherited one from the person. Call play. It calls this. Then it's time to call the eat method. It says, oh, time to go eat. OK, what am I? The Java virtual machine says, what am I? I am a child. Does the child have its own eat method? Yes, that's the one I'm going to call. Now, this is powerful because at runtime, you can decide what methods are being run here. And you can see that even though the child does not have a play method, the person's play method is smart enough to override its own eat method with the eat method of the child when it's pointing to a child. And that is the essence of polymorphism.
We're only going to touch on polymorphism this year because it represents pretty much the pinnacle of difficulty in this course. We'll talk much more about polymorphism next year if you stay with me in data structures. But this is the gist of it right here.